Hello and welcome to a fresh new episode of Science Monitor, our weekly update on all that is happening in the field of science and technology in and around the country. From a new web portal Naksha to a giant asteroid that just zoomed past us, we have many exciting news in store for you. But first, let's take a look at the headlines. Survey of India's new web portal Naksha, PDF maps for free download. UNESCO applauds Indian activities on International Year of Light. Giant asteroid zooms past Earth. Earning through organic farming, we will learn from a farmer from Madhya Pradesh. And in today's segment of In Focus, we will discuss about the theme for this year's Earth Day. Survey of India, the oldest scientific institution in India, recently completed 250 years. The organization has till date provided many services to extend our geological understanding. Along these lines has come Naksha, a freely accessible web portal which will provide citizens free geological information and maps. Survey of India the oldest scientific establishment of the country and one of the oldest survey establishments in the world is celebrating its Sesta Centennial this year. Yes, established in 1767, India's principal mapping agency recently completed 250 years of dedicated service to the nation, an occasion that calls for a befitting celebration. Marking the landmark National Survey Day celebrations was the National Conference on Geospatial Paradigm in India Users' Perspective on Geospatial Policy Framework in India. The event, organized at the FIKI Federation House, New Delhi, was inaugurated by the Union Minister of Science and Technology and Earth Sciences, Dr. Harsh Vardhan. What is more, all the maps created by SOI will now be available to us citizens for free download with Nakshe. Nakshe, a new web portal providing free download of Survey of India topographic maps in PDF format was launched during the curtain raiser of the event. With Nakshe, Citizens will be able to access the topographic maps showing natural and man-made geographical features including terrain or topography in 1 each to 50,000 scale. Earlier, we were selling these both in hard copy as well as in the digital form. Even to get a hard copy map, one has to visit our map sales office, which are few in the country. Say like in every office I have, in every state capital there is a map sales counter. So one has to go there and buy it. Otherwise for the digital version of the map, they have to send an inter request and then after due process we used to issue to the inventor. So now with this facility, for anybody who wants to use the Survey of India map, they can straight away download it from wherever they are. Just go on to the net, go to the Naksha portal and download the map you want. The maps, which can be freely downloaded using an Aadhaar-enabled user authentication process, will be immensely helpful in education, planning, development activities and for users to create web-based applications. The event was attended by many dignitaries, including Sri Vai S. Chaudhary, Minister of State for the Ministry of Science and Technology and Earth Sciences, Professor Ashutosh Sharma, Secretary DST, Dr. Swarna Subbarao, Surveyor General of India, and several other scientists and professionals of geospatial industry. Celebrating the vitality of light in our lives, the year 2015 was observed as the International Year of Light. The occasion saw the organization of seminars, workshops and lectures on light and related technologies. 
What is uh, more interesting is uh, that India has been applauded by UNESCO as one of the nations to conduct the largest number of programs in this context. Light, one of the crucial components that made life possible on Earth. From photosynthesis to vision and general well-being, light is important for all aspects of health and life. And acknowledging the vitality of light to life, 2015 was celebrated as the International Year of Light. The observation culminated with the final report on the International Year of Light and light-based technologies. The report, officially released by UNESCO, is a compilation of reports on international light year activities from all the participating countries. The report from India appearing in the final report by Zahid H. Khan, National Contact for India IYL, vividly captures the various activities that were conducted across the country as a part of the celebrations of the International Light Year. Throughout I mean the world, about 147 countries were connected to UNESCO with the International Year of Light. And out of that, you see, India was one of them. India was very active in the sense that throughout, about 13,000 events have been organized throughout the world in the year. Out of which, about 250 events have been organized in India itself. So these 250 events I'm talking about is that which were posted on their website. Apart, for, apart from that, you see, there were a number of groups who organized events on their own. According to the report, 246 events were organized across the country under various categories such as public outreach, academic research and program for youngsters anniversary celebrations and audio-visual films on light and other related themes. Bhingyan Prasad ne anna sanstaon ke saath bhi milke kaam kiya aur is mein iskoolo mein bhoat saare lectures kiye gai jis mein ulek karna bhoat jaruri hai ki ek photonics pe humari ek regular kai sthano pe karsalaayin chali aur yeh joh karsalaayin thi woh teachers, student ke liye thi इसके अलावा हमने बहुत सारा एक रिसोर्स मटेरियल डेवलप किया वो ऑडियो फॉर्म में था वीडियो फॉर्म में था इसके अलावा कई सारे हमने पोस्टर्स इंपॉर्टेंट पॉपुलर आर्टिकल्स डिफरेंट मैगजीन्स के द्वारा पूरे साल भर इस तरह की एक्टिविटी को किया द प्रोग्राम्स इंक्लूडेड वेरियस नेशनल एंड इंटरनेशनल सेमिनार्स सिंपोजिया एंड वर्कशॉप्स अलोंग विद ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम्स मेनी कॉन्टेस्ट एंड एग्जीबिशंस Various organizations, academic institutions and universities across the nation participated in the events. The 13-episode film on light and related technologies produced by Vigyan Prasad finds a special mention in the report. According to the report, the films on various aspects of light ranging from why the International Year of Light to light and culture, to measuring the cosmos, has seen wide reception. We did not even notice and a giant asteroid has zoomed past us. Yes, according to NASA experts, the asteroid, measuring about 650 meters, recently passed by. It was first identified in 2014. While small asteroids keep passing by our planet, this is one of those rare occasions when an asteroid of this size has passed by this close, say experts. A gigantic asteroid heading towards Earth, spelling end of the world, a frightening childhood tale. Well, 
while these stories were just the result of creative imagination. Here is a real scientific fact. According to NASA experts, a gigantic asteroid has just zoomed by our planet. The asteroid named 2014 J025, measuring between 600 to 1400 meters wide, passed by Earth on 19th April at a distance of 1.8 million kilometers. According to the experts, the asteroid is the largest asteroid to come this near to Earth since 2014, but has not caused any kind of impact on Earth. The images of the zooming asteroid was captured by telescopes at the Institute of Astrophysics on the Canary Islands. Asteroids are rocky bodies orbiting the Sun and generally scattered between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. Believed to be small bodies which never reached up to the point of forming planets themselves, asteroids are studied by scientists to understand planet formation. The asteroid 2014 J025 was discovered in May 2014 and this approach of the asteroid to Earth is expected to the closest for at least the next 500 years. In 2004, asteroid Tutatis, measuring 5 km in diameter, zoomed by Earth at a distance of 1.6 million kilometers. Continuous use of uh, chemical fertilizers and pesticides uh, not only affects uh, soil fertility in the long run, but also is extremely toxic to our bodies. A viable alternative to chemical-driven agriculture is organic farming. So here we introduce you to a farmer from Madhya Pradesh who is not only earning profit from organic farming but is also inspiring other farmers in the region. Avinash Singh Dangri a farmer from district Ghargon, village Bistan in Madhya Pradesh earns his livelihood from organic cultivation of his five acres of land. While in two acres, he grows vegetables like tomato, cauliflower, brinjal, carrots, onions and bottled gourds. He uses the remaining three acres to grow wheat, maize, pulses and soya bean. Five years back, Avinash, like many others, depended fully on chemical fertilizers. But today, his organic farm is maintained using natural fertilizers and pesticides. किसानों को मेरी एक ही सलाह है कि ज़्यादा उत्पादन और अधिक पैसा कमाने की लालच में ना आते हुए लोगों के स्वास्थ्य के साथ खिलवाड़ ना किया जाए, पुरानी पद्धति से जैविक पद्धति के द्वारा खेती की जाए और आम जनता को अच्छा स्वाद और अच्छी चीजें उपलब्ध कराई जाए। Avinash sells his produce himself in a stall twice a week. He sells vegetables at Ghargo on Sundays and Wednesdays. And interestingly, people love his organically grown vegetables and believe that his organic farming is an exemplary effort beneficial for their health. Avinash has taken upon himself to protect the population from slow poisoning due to the agricultural chemicals present in our daily food. Needless to say, his initiative is encouraging other farmers to adopt organic farming and give up the use of harmful chemicals. And now it is time to take a very short break. We'll be back with more science news. Keep watching Science Monitor. Earth, our home, the only planet which can sustain life. But some of our reckless developmental activities have led to large-scale pollution. With the depleting forest covers and increasing urbanization, consequences like a greenhouse effect are evident. But how to educate the masses about environment, climate change and its lethal effects? This is the inspiring theme behind this year's World Earth Day. 
What are the implications of Earth Day and how did the world celebrate the spirit of Earth this World Earth Day on 22nd of April? Let us explore in our segment in focus. Earth, our home, home to millions of diverse life forms like us. Earth, the only planet with liquid water on its surface. The only planet at a perfect distance away from sun to maintain habitable temperature. The only planet with the perfect atmosphere containing oxygen and the correct atmospheric pressure. Above all, the only planet which is known to sustain life. While Earth itself is 4.5 billion years old, the civilization as we know it has existed on the Earth only for the last 6,000 years. But shocking as it is, that within a short span of 6,000 years, humans have destructed planet more than all other species compared together. It was not until the 1970s that the world recognized the need of focusing on environmental issues and voicing the need of conservation in the form of World Earth Day. World Earth Day is an annual event celebrated on 22nd April and dedicated to the cause of environmental protection. Earth Day Network has a permanent Indian program called the EDN India, headquartered in Kolkata. This year, as the movement enters its 47th year, the World Earth Day is dedicated to the theme Environmental and Climate Literacy. The goal is to create knowledge-led societies and inspire action in defense of environmental protection. Knowledge indeed is strength. Anyone can be a part of the World Earth Day and gather knowledge for a cleaner, healthier and more sustainable planet for all. Alright, to discuss the World Earth Day, we have with us uh, in our studio today Dr. Chirashri Ghosh from the Department of Environmental Studies, Delhi University. Dr. Ghosh, welcome to our program. Dr. Ghosh, uh, we all know that climate change is affecting our planet on a large scale. But uh, how seriously do you think that the world is actually trying to tackle this problem? You see, climate change is a natural process. It was not reinvented, neither it was done by new way. The understanding started after formation of IPCC, International Panel for Climate Change. Mm -hmm. And after that, people started thinking as it was initiated by the United Nations and then IPCC formation done by developed country. So the, their understanding was much clear and before they have initiated compared to the developing nation. But definitely we are, they are thinking more. That doesn't mean we don't have to think any way. We are also initiated that process of thinking. But uh, the as they are the responsible country, uh, being an annex one country, so their responsibility goes much better. So they have to think about the emission cut. And that was the reason the COP meetings are happening in different places and they are participating and there's a big debate is happening who is to us to be, take the responsibility for this type of mm. emission, lowering the emission in case of climate change. Right. And Dr. Kosha. Uh, the theme of this year's Earth Day was uh, environment and uh, climate literacy. Uh, so what, is the, what, what does this term mean and how effective uh, you think it has been over the years? I feel um, being a developing country, citizen, I strongly feel climate lit literacy is a very important part because there's a seven principle behind this climate literacy. That first is the solar system as a power of house of energy. And how earth and atmospheric science are interrelated with this thing, then the part of the responsibility of natural and man-made ecosystem as a uh, emission of the greenhouse gases, then happening that how the, the organisms are there in the at earth and atmosphere, then how the human being impact in the climate system, then you know, the changes in the 
climate system is impacting human health. So, these are all interrelated issues and then the role of the individual. Mm. I feel if you take the top down and bottom up approach, we have to think that individual is the responsible for the climate sense also. So, that climate change part, we have the climate literacy is a big tool for us to make people aware of the, the responsibility, how to do the thing and I think stakeholdership of the climate system. So, it is very, very important part of climate policies that we have to make climate literacy first to the individual. You are saying that an individual is responsible, he has, he or she has uh, the responsibility towards uh, keeping our planet safe, uh, but what can we do, what, uh, what should all, we all do as human beings, as an individual? Definitely, I, I can just give you two, three examples like that because I am a teacher, I am going to the different colleges to teach them like this way because most of the time young uh, generation ask us that we, we are not researchers, we are not doing any big research, so how we, can we do something? You know, we, when we are stakeholders, you will come, then you can find out like energy savings. There are many things the awareness not, because resource limitation is the big problem. So, if we know that resource limitation, water is limited, food is definitely affecting the food production. Yes. So, every limitation of energy in, at doorstep, because the individual create a house and community, then community is going to the state or center or any country. So, individual, if we manage our climate energy resources, Definitely, it will be a big thing. We have initiated every community based, college based, school based carbon sustainability campus management. It is very important that people should understand mm -hmm. what is their role to do the job and uh, not thinking about bigger that the, only the government has a responsibility either in a developed and developing country way. So, I think it is very, very important. There are many things like green lifestyle, using the thing, not wasting waste. So, there are many ways there are we are preaching and we are giving the information to the sharing to the students and the particularly the community that the RWA to have the responsibility. Absolutely. So, it all comes down to I guess uh, respecting yeah. the mother earth and its yeah. resources. Uh, thank you so much uh, Dr. Ghosh for joining us in this discussion today and sharing your perspective on the entire issue. Thank you so much. Well, that is all for today. We will be back with fresh new stories on science and technology again next week. Till then, keep watching Rajasabha TV.